Hello internet people, this is Pocket Gamer to show you what is new on the App Store this week including Infinity Blade 3, Angry Birds, Star Wars 2, Incredipede, Riddick, DuckTales and more. Have a watch, why don't you? You're already on the video. You don't even have to do anything, you just have to keep your eyes open. Infinity Blade 3 has everything you might expect in a new Infinity Blade game. It's got scrappy touchscreen swiping fights, massive monsters to take on, and incredible graphics. And there's some new stuff in there too, like a big dragon geezer, a second character to play as, and some new fighting styles to play with. But the biggest change is that everything is now split into levels, so where Infinity Blade had one castle and one epic boss fight, this threequel has a whole procession of levels and an entire cast of impossibly difficult boss battles to fight. And so, you'll repeatedly get stuck in that kind of frustrating loop of being killed, starting back right at the beginning and then slowly improving your skills, your stats and your arsenal until you're strong enough to win that boss bout. I found the whole setup a tad tiresome to be honest. I think it worked as a really interesting way to frame a short game in Infinity Blade, uh, but constantly repeating everything just feels out of place in this giant story-driven adventure. It's fun, but uh, I found it a little bit tedious. Angry Birds Star Wars 2, which recreates the Star Wars prequels as bird vs pig playsets, was about as inevitable as death and taxes, wasn't it? The gameplay is going to be awfully familiar to you if you've played any Angry Birds game before in your life. You use a slingshot to fire birds at rickety 2D physics structures in the hopes of murdering a troop of pigs. This one adds some new special powers for the birds and you can join the pork side and play as the pigs if you so desire. But the really big change is that this sequel has an enormous list of 30 odd pigs and birds to play as and you can tag team in your favourite Star Wars characters if you don't fancy playing as Jar Jar Binks. You can rent heroes from the in-game shop or zap in these telepod toys which are quite nifty. It's a bit pointless, but it will be fun for kids and Star Wars obsessives, and while the game is pretty much the same thing you've played a million times before, it's always good fun, isn't it? Vin Diesel video game Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay was well loved on PC and consoles, as far as I can remember at least. And now some key members from that development team have gone together to make a new Reddit game and it's on mobile. It's a top-down, touch-driven stealth game. You tap on the environment to move Riddick about as he creeps from shadow to shadow and takes out goons. You'll need to watch out for guard patrol patterns, move bodies into shadows and decide whether it's worth giving up your position to fire off a few rounds with a found weapon. You can also pinch the screen to get a cool strategic overview of the action. We'll need a bit more time with the game to see if it has enough ideas to keep things fresh, but unusually for a movie tie-in, it's off to a good start, I think. Carnage Racing comes from Jagex, who make RuneScape. Now they've got this kind of scrappy, kind of unpolished uh, racer with big trucks and big guns. Uh, and it has this odd phase shift mechanic where you can leap through time and space by driving into magic rocks. It's all a bit strange. Uh, the whole game is a bit sort of unambitious, a bit rubbish. But, you know, if you want something like MotorStorm on your iPhone, maybe this is something to look into. Uh, it's free to download. And then you can upgrade to the full game to get loads more content uh, with an in-app purchase in the app, funnily enough. Indie creature creator Incredipede is a bit like balmy athletics game Quop, but with weird long-legged bugs. In each level you play as some ungainly critter with an odd collection of limbs and must contract and relax the insect's muscles to move her along. Eventually you'll be able to build your own creature in a rather fiddly little level editor. Overall the game feels better on iPad than iPhone I think. 
Uh, and you can also share your Frankenstein creations with friends and enemies. It's all a bit bizarre and sometimes quite frustrating and slow. Uh, but it is a beautiful game. It's completely unique. So if you want something weird and different on your iPhone, check this one out. Race cars, lasers, aeroplanes, here in DuckTales, shooting people with the toilet, online, with friends, you might get defeated, and then you can just pay cash to have your health repleted. DuckTales, woohoo! Uh, yes, right, so, sorry, um, yes, while console gamers got a remastered remake of NES classic DuckTales, uh, us mobile gamers are kind of stuck with this bizarre free-to-play online arena shooter star starring various characters from the DuckTales universe. It's all very weird. You might smack an enemy with a tennis racket while they throw syrupy pancakes in your face uh, and you've got to sort of snaffle up gold and transport it across the map. It's also free-to-play into the stratosphere where you can buy so much stuff to get ahead. Uh, it's also impossible to find anyone to play with at the moment because the servers are just completely uh, vacant. Uh, it's a bit weird, I don't know why this game was even made. Orbo Run is about a little robot chappy who can roll himself up into a ball, Metroid style, and then roll along a perilous floating platform and try not to topple off into the abyss, Super Monkey Ball style. Uh, the controls are pretty good, uh, there's loads of content. I just hope it gets a little bit harder in some of the later levels, it's a bit easy at the moment. Uh, we'll have a full review of that, this game, soon on site. Full review of all of these games eventually. Keep your internet browser on pocketgamer.co.uk.